We welcome Dr. Tim McKnight in here on the BT Morning Show's Talk with the Doc. Good to see you this morning. Thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Good yeah. to see you. As always. And uh, boy, you've got everybody hooked now because you're telling us the easiest way to lose weight is not exercising. How can that be? Well, the key is the, in the word easiest because um, the answer to this puzzle is sleep. Hmm. Sleep deprivation is a big trigger for weight gain. And... Um, so I wanted to kind of explain that and just highlight a few studies that have uh, shown that this is so. So we know that when there's sleep deprivation, the body is going to be in a state of stress. And when the body's in a state of stress, it secretes cortisol. Now, you can be in marital stress. You can be financial stress. You can be, you can be in stress from too much exercise. Um, but sleep deprivation is one of the most common causes for stress. And when you have stress, you make more cortisol. And when you make cortisol, your adrenal glands make that, it raises your insulin level and it causes, we talked about this last week, it causes you to, to put on fat. And when you have fat, you become more inflamed. So your joints hurt more and you know your cholesterol levels go up, blood pressure goes up, uh, all the inflammatory markers go up. So just sleep deprivation, could be there could be a link there with arthritis and blood pressure and diabetes and high cholesterol and on and on and on. So we know that uh, there's two conditions where you have too much cortisol, and that is uh, Cushing's disease. And in Cushing's disease, with too much cortisol, these people have a hard time, well, they become overweight. And the opposite disease is Addison's disease, which President Kennedy had Addison's disease. The adrenal glands burn out. You don't make any cortisol, and there's weight loss. So those are the two extremes, and it tells you uh, or it just points out that by having too much or too little cortisol, it can affect your weight. Okay, so here's a couple interesting uh, observations about sleep deprivation, which is a, it's a major stressor. In 1910, the average American slept nine hours. Hmm. Now, 30% of our working class adults from the age of 30 to 64 sleep less than six hours a night on average. And those that have, do shift work sleep less than five hours. These people are especially prone to all kinds of problems. And I see this all the time in the office. Um, so s shift work is really tough. We know that if you sleep less than seven hours a night on average, there's an association with sleep deprivation and weight gain. Just people who chronically sleep less than seven hours are going to have issues controlling their weight. And we know that if you uh, sleep five to seven hours a night, there's a 50% increase in weight gain. So, you know, that's kind of where I've been running, you know, six hours, six and a half hours. So it's just that alone is another contributor to the to the weight loss puzzle or why we have issues with weight. Mm -hmm. So we also another we also know that if you are sleep deprived you'll have decreased insulin sensitivity which means insulin resistance and we talked about that last yeah. week. Insulin resistance your weight's going to go up. Okay, so here's a couple interesting um Interesting observations. One night of sleep deprivation will increase your cortisol level by 100%. Wow. It doubles the cortisol level. That's crazy. Now, um, you know, cortisol is meant for acute stressful situations. The body has been designed perfectly. So you're in a stressful situation for just a couple of weeks. Your body can say, okay, I can help you with this. I'll get you by in five, four hours of sleep. I'm going to make cortisol and I'm going to squirt it out at high levels. Cortisol, it converts to cortisone and cortisone and prednisone are essentially the same molecule. So think of this, when you're in a stressful situation, your body says, essentially, let me give you some I'll, I'll make you some prednisone, something like prednisone. Well, now if you sprain your ankle, uh, you know, so let's say you're a soldier in combat and you roll your ankle. Well, you got prednisone. You're not going to hurt as bad. You're not going to swell as bad. You're going to have less, less inflammation and more energy. Prednisone and cortisone and cortisol will give you more energy. That's perfect for an acute stressful situation. But the body also perceives, ah, they're in combat or this is stressful. Uh, not sure when they're going to eat again, so let me help them store energy. We're going to make fat, and mm -hmm. we're going to put it in the belly because we can access that later as an energy or fuel source. So that's short term. That's a, that's a pretty good design, except for the, the visceral weight gain. Long term, the cortisol levels, you start dropping cortisol, and you can't make it anymore. And now there's it's just the opposite, more pain, more swelling. 
still having problems with sleep and you're still having this weight issue. Okay, so sleep one night of sleep deprivation increases cortisol by 100%. We know the next night following a, a sleep-deprived night, there's a 30, 37 to 45% um, increase in cortisol. So you don't... On top of the on 100? On top of it. So it's the, oh it's God. not on top of it, but the next night, instead of a 100% increase, okay. it's a it's a 50% increase, yeah. essentially, right? And you really don't want that because cortisol, too much cortisol is like too much prednisone. It does all those bad things. Five days of sleep deprivation increase the insulin level by 20%. Okay, so again, this is a direct link to weight gain. Um, another study showed that decreased sleep, uh, sleep increases your risk for di- type 2 diabetes. Now, we always think of this as a, as a dietary risk or a weight-related risk. Well, sleep deprivation puts you at risk for type 2 diabetes. Another really interesting study looked at leptin and ghrelin. Now, these are hormones that have to do with uh, your satiety center. Leptin, I remember leptin because leptin starts with L. Leptin closes your lips. When you have leptin, you're not hungry. Ghrelin, which is uh, start, it's spelled G H R E L I N, is the hormone associated with satiety. So when you have too much ghrelin, it makes your stomach growl. So I, you know, lips and leptin, growl and ghrelin. That's how I remember the difference between study the two. hints from Doctor McKnight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I have to make it easy. There's too much information. So sleep deprivation. Uh, this study showed an increase in body weight, an increase in ghrelin. So sleep deprived, your stomach's going to growl, you're going to be more hungry, and a decrease in leptin, your lips are not going to want to stay closed be- mm-hmm. because you're satisfied they're going to want to stay open. So a lot of really great information telling us that me- getting sleep is really when the body restores itself. And most of us push too hard. And, you know, we go to bed too late and uh, sometimes we can't fall asleep because we got lights on, cell phone, iPad, TV, whatever. We don't fall asleep naturally uh, from the melatonin our brain is making to tell us it's time to go to sleep. It's 10 o'clock. It's dark. You should be sleeping. And so we can't do that. And then we wake up with an alarm clock and we want to hit the snooze button two or three times. And then we push ourselves out of bed. And then it's a cup or two of coffee to get ourselves going so we don't fall asleep at the wheel. And it's more coffee in the morning. And all along our body's saying, you're you're stressing me out. You're not getting enough sleep. So we make too much cortisol. And then the cortisol burns out because we can't continue to make it. So then it's inflammation. It's pain. It's resistance to weight uh, loss and and increased uh, uh, susceptibility to weight gain, which is then insulin resistance and then diabetes and heart disease and all the things we talked about last week with insulin resistance yeah. from migraine headaches to uh, forms of autism to arthritis and on and on and on. So when I said that it was the easiest way to lose weight, um, the easy ex- easiest activity to lose weight, I meant that because exercise takes a little bit of effort. Oh, yeah. But getting enough sleep means you go to bed early and you look at your alarm clock and hey i've got another hour you roll over and go back to sleep right that's that's, me- that's pretty toughness. that's pretty easy to do <laughs> if you don't if you don't get too stressed out about the the to-do list that you got to wake up for on the scale of uh, of um, lifting weights yeah that's true yes. uh, this is probably a whole different show but some people are making just life decisions uh, like you and i to not sleep as much as we should some other people aren't making that decision consciously all right and uh, i wonder if there are ways to uh, get over that you can just give a quick yes or no and maybe we can talk about that so later. i'm not sure i understand the question so <clears throat> they, they're not getting enough sleep but they they're not meaning to or they're not making plans to go to bed late and get up early they just can't sleep oh oh excellent yeah okay. so here's here's the here's the conundrum with this when you have cortisol deficiency when you've burned out the cortisol from chronic stress we call this adrenal fatigue. And how do I know that you have adrenal fatigue? Well, I can measure your cortisol levels, but they're hard to measure because they go up and down. They go up in the morning, they go down in the mm-hmm. afternoon. That's why we usually feel better physically in the morning. We have more cortisol, more natural prednisone. When you're sick or ill, you feel worse in the late afternoon or early evening because your cortisol levels have dropped, more pain, more inflammation. But when you have chronic sleep deprivation and you can't make cortisol, uh, aside from measuring it, the hallmark uh, answers to the questions are, 
Do you have a hard time falling asleep? Yes. Do you have a hard time getting up in the morning because you're so tired? Yes. That tells me you have adrenal fatigue. You have cortisol insufficiency. So what you're talking about are the people that can't fall asleep, right? They want to, but Mm -hmm. they can't. Their minds are going. That's a sign of chronic stress. So how do we deal with stress? Well, in allopathic medicine, we give you sleeping pills and we give you antidepressants yeah. and all these other medications. But I would prefer to help people understand what their bodies are trying to do. It's that it's dark out. You're going to feel a wave of uh, some type of fatigue unless you're amped up with stress and anxiety. So we have to learn to to manage stress and anxiety. That's that's mindfulness. That's meditation. That's counseling. Whatever it takes. The last resort is medicine. I really don't want to put you on Ambien because that doesn't treat the root problem, makes you dependent on Ambien. Yeah. And at some point, it's not going to work for you, and you're going to need something stronger. And these medications off you make, often make you feel like a zombie the next morning. So that's not the answer. So uh, it's, it's a, your question is a great question, but there's not a simple answer to it. It's, it's managed stress. Melatonin is the natural sleep aid. Take that an hour before bed. Um, don't drink coffee. Uh, a couple hours before, probably four hours before bed. Don't exercise vigorously before at bed because you're going to jack up your adrenaline and be too tired to fall asleep. Um, don't go to bed with a cell phone, uh, with artificial light in your eyes, and with thoughts on your mind where you're Googling, you're bouncing all over the Internet. Don't go to bed with the TV on. Uh, we've all had that experience where we go to bed, we're tired, we turn the TV on, or we've got a cell phone in our hands, and we're just, wow, we're, now we're getting curious. And or now we're into this movie. And before you know it, it's 1 o'clock and we're wide awake. Um, so we want to avoid those activities yeah. as much as we can. And we really need to learn mindfulness. We need to s- set priorities so that we don't take put too much on our plate. Um, we need to have healthy relationships, all those things. The the healthy lifestyle that I've, I've always been preaching about. So I hope that helps. There's not yeah. a simple answer. But when somebody comes in with adrenal fatigue, and they say, well, how do I fix this? I can't get up in the morning, can't go to sleep at night. I say, manage your stress better. If you have a stressful day, today's an extremely stressful day, what nature and your body would tell would tell to you is make tomorrow just to the same magnitude of stress you have, make that magnitude the opposite of happy, fun, relaxed. Go golfing, go fishing, go see a movie, take a bubble bath, go have dinner with your best friends and have some good laughs. But most of us don't do that. We, we've got these rigid schedules, and we've got so much on our plate. We push, 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 and then we're stuck, and we can't get out of it. And we haven't, we're not listening to what nature's teaching us. Yeah. All right. Well, glad that you're helping nature out then. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Tim McKnight. This morning, our talk with the doc.